family. Well, it's pretty obvious uh, Mr. Webster never went to the Hearn Center. Uh, we like to consider ourselves the uh, sixth man on the floor. Uh, just cause as much trouble, make as much noise, and disrupt the other team. We are the sixth person on the Mizzou team. We try to give the opponent as much trouble as possible so to affect them. The Antlers have become a fixture at the Hearn Center. An elite group, well, let's just say a group, of 30 collegiate men determined to help their team. Their tactic? Diversion. Disrupt the other team as much as possible. Both Daniel Brennan and Steve Patterson are from St. Louis. Both are in their junior years at Mizzou. And both had a tough time trying to explain to me the mystique that goes along with being an antler. Uh, well, the theory is you're born an antler. Uh, I came to a game when I was about 10 years old, and uh, it was a pretty boring game, slow game, and I watched the antlers, and at that point, I, I knew I was destined to be an antler. It, it, it's a little distorted uh, psyche. Uh, like, you, you just get crazy is all you have to do. How popular have the antlers become at Mizzou? Well, even the biggest man on campus, Norm Stewart, apparently approves of their vociferous presence. Norm loves us. Uh, if it wasn't for Norm, we probably wouldn't be around. <laughs> Why is that? He just, he sticks up for us. He takes care of us. Uh, he just, he loves us. The one trait most antlers seem to share is a high decibel voice. Hey, Curly, where's my Larry? What's up with that price, you stubby little Loud man? voice, uh, creative yeah. mind. That's very important, creative mind. Uh, this has to tell you something. Uh, <laughs> it does, but I'm really not sure what. <laughs> yeah, uh, you've got to be willing to, uh, to pretty much make a fool of yourself. The uniform is also key to being an antler. After the required antler jersey, well, uh, anything goes. Goodwill is a, a, a place that we frequent and uh, get some clothes to wear and wear them to the games. So in essence, you're, you're doing the antler thing and you're also helping a worthy cause. Exactly, exactly. I think it's a tax write-off. <laughs> okay, maybe they're a little obnoxious, maybe they're a little loud at games, but you know what? They really like me. I think they like me as a person and it's not because I'm wearing this hat. Right, guys? Yeah! Yeah, some people will do anything to get on TV. Uh, now, through some intense investigative recording, reporting, News Channel 5 Sports has learned that one of the founding fathers of the Antlers is none other than Jeff Gordon of the Post-Dispatch. Jeff, I gotta ask you, how did you come up with the idea for the Antlers? Well, we were just looking for an outlet for antisocial behavior and <laughs> be our obnoxious self. Really started in 1975, 76. Myself and another guy, Rob Banning, went to games and screamed at people. Well, nothing organized, just the usual verbal abuse. And a year <laughs> after that, we really got a group of guys together. We didn't have any uniforms or anything. Right. But we, one of the dances we did at the town other teams was the Antler Dance, which was a, off a Saturday Night Live skit with uh, Lily Tomlin. And uh, from there, uh, we got our name from Doug Lilgren at the time, the uh, student body president, gave us our name. And uh, jerseys followed the third year, and, and uh, on it went. Uh, yeah. We had some great leadership. Are you surprised at how the, the concept of the antlers has taken off in Missouri? It, it's become almost a cult. Yeah, it was strong uh, from the outset. At times, it struggled because we didn't have good leadership uh, dealing Well, it was certainly a leader group that we saw Monday night, definitely. But now, these guys are definitely uh, up to the old standards. Yeah, I think so. Jeff Gordon, Mr. Antler, thank you very much. And we'll be right back with more after this.